Unless this is the problem with legal marijuana. No, that's the problem with cost of money. Maybe it's slash philosophy minus. All right, we're going to do one more, one more uh, show that this does not have a limit. All right, so make two paths. Hopefully, you get different values. Just using intuition. I think there'll be a lot of paths that give zero because the numerator degree is higher than the denominator degree. So generally, the top will go to zero more quickly than the bottom. So I'm telling you this has no limit. I want you to pick two paths and then show that those two particular paths give different values. Uh, going along the x or y axis is a good idea, but I can tell you right away you're going to get zero either way. So they'll both give you zero. So it's good to use one of them, but you also need to find one that doesn't give you zero. So x axis is one, well, we'll go t comma zero. So that's an, one nice way to approach. <coughs> And I want you to figure out another way to approach that gives you a non-zero limit. There's a lot of ways to get zero. If you found three of them, great. Find one that's not zero, though. Hopefully, there's a way to not, anybody not get zero. All right. So there are ways to not get zero. I'm just warning you, a lot most ways are going to get you to zero. So try quadratic or square root. Please. 
think they're both equally valid. That's a good idea. <laughs> <laughs> I went exponential. Trigonometric's good too. Is there a square in the It is. If I didn't start talking, I'm a little overheading. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I'm just worried the math on this is not going to be very fun.
Aha, uh -huh, no more divided by zero. number I didn't want to get. <laughs> <laughs> yep, good thing I did Libby Tiles rule twice. To arrive at a conclusion I already found. All right, anybody get one that works that they feel comfortable with? No? I think I did write the problem down, right? We'll do one more shot. Did you write your sign path down? All right, so here's the y equals sine x function. So all you have to do to turn these into parameterized, so we're on a4 of t. So anytime you can write y equals function of x, you can just go t comma the function of comma sine t. So anytime you got y equals a function of x, you can just rewrite it like this. Uh, I could use tangent as well. Tangent looks not similar, but goes towards, goes through the origin. So I could use tangent just as well. My derivatives wouldn't be as fun though. This is 2 as x squared. I could do cos t minus one, yeah, or one minus cos t. Man, is this problem in your textbook? I have a feeling I probably wrote it down wrong. Sine t. So that one. That one's not going to the origin, though. So you'll find the limit at a different point. Uh, ah. All right. So I have a feeling this one probably exists. Uh, just change the x squared to x to the fourth. 
Can I borrow your pencil? All right. All right, now a comment on, so you should be careful when you write problems down. Uh, but also, when, if you think you're, so we showed four different paths that were significantly different, all gave zero over zero, that still doesn't prove the limit is zero. Now every different path you find increases the odds, but you can't say, ah, oh, it's likely, it's probably zero. So that doesn't work in math. Either, it either is zero or it isn't zero. So we're not actually able with this to show that it's zero. We have some indications, but we, we cannot claim that the limit is zero from our work right here. We don't need the two on top, so I'm just going to get rid of that. That's just going to be two times the limit that doesn't exist. So I'm pretty sure that a lot of our work will work down here. Our paths will probably make this one fail. So I don't think we may need to make new paths. We can probably just reuse the ones that we had up there. So either of these alphas should give you one half right here. And it doesn't matter which one you choose. They're actually the same path. You're just going different speed. They trace out the same path. Well, on the, on the alpha 4, you better make sure your t is greater than 0. Or you're going to have problems. Greater than or equal to 0. All right, so we got 0 and a half.
Now, there's lots of ways to get 0 on this one. For example, I just did TT, and that got me 0. So there's a lot of ways to approach that'll give you 0. But again, a lot of ways giving you 0 is not the same as every way giving you 0. All right, so there's a lot of practice with paths. And of course, you might need L'Hopital's rule or general algebra skills. One of the more difficult things, aside from writing down your actual alpha function, is this part right here, where you're taking your path and effing it. So you want to be very careful. You know what is going in for x, y, sometimes z. So I just did two variables, but three variables is almost exactly the same. You just Your third coordinate goes in for all your z's. And did I say where the midterm was going to cut off? Yesterday. Yesterday. All right, so the end of this section then. All right, so we're going to go back and do that one problem that, that I didn't do before. And it was somewhere. If I, if I didn't put questions up so far, then it won't be on your midterm. I'll look and see if I, have, if I actually have questions for that section. I may have forgot to assign it, or I may not have any questions at all. All right, so is this one at the top of the screen? Is that right? No. Oh, it's almost exactly like the one we just did. Just has a 4 instead of a 2 and the other variable squared. All right, so let's take this one. As our last example, we failed. Well, I failed earlier. You guys were just here watching. So let's do this properly. So that 4 is not relevant. We can get that 4 out of there. That will make a difference. To do is approach along the x-axis and then the y-axis. See what we get. So on the x-axis we have t0. As t approaches 0, All right, so we approach on two different directions. The limit is 0 on these two paths. So I can say it looks like the limit is 0. Now, it's very different than saying the limit is definitely 0. So how do we prove a limit with the definition? We start at the very end and then work backwards. 
So our definition of a limit, I think, was last section. Nope. Yes. Nope, it was this section. Have I used the upside down A yet? No. Does that mean all? Have I used backwards E? Yeah. That means there exists, obviously. All right, what about ST? Such that, all right. And then this arrow right here is an if then. <coughs> So if we're close, if we're delta close to A, then our output, our f of o x, will be epsilon close to L. So how do we prove a limit? We say take any epsilon greater than zero. What we do is we start at the end. Now our function uh, is x's and y's, and we said our L was zero. And our function is x, oh, x, y squared over x squared plus y squared minus zero, so I'm not gonna write that, it's less than epsilon. We are supposed to do some algebra. I'll just write dot, dot, dot. And we are supposed to get to x minus a less than delta. Now, what is x minus a? So a is 0, 0. So x is now two coordinates, x, y. So when, I'm writing, when I wrote the limit up here, remember every x and a are higher dimensional. So what I wrote in bold up there are actually either vectors or points, however you like to think about them. So it's not just x, it's in our case x, y. All right, x, y minus 0, 0, so that's the vector x, y. And what's the magnitude of that vector? All right. So there we go. That's what we need to get to. So I know the starting point. I know the ending point. Now we're going to very carefully fill in the middle. And it's not going to be easy. So let's go ahead and take out these little baby steps. I don't need that stuff anymore. I don't need that anymore. And whatever we get down here, it should be a function of epsilon. So it'll be some function of epsilon, might be epsilon cubed, square root epsilon, something like that. But it better be p greater than zero, as long as epsilon is greater than zero. Let's cheat a little bit. I think I showed you how to cheat in pre-calculus one. No, pre-calculus two. So we're looking at the end, at the, our last step, and then we're going backwards a step. So if the square root of this thing is less than delta, then without the square root, better be less than delta squared. All right, so that's a little closer. We're inching closer. Now, so what's really missing, well, first of all, this should be on the denominator, right? So if there's some reciprocal, 
happening here. So that's one issue. And the other issue is xy squared. So x and y are real numbers, not imaginary numbers, so this inequality should hold. Well, it does hold for real numbers. So all I did on the right side is I added another x squared, which the smallest that could be is 0 or something bigger. So if I replace y squared by x squared plus y squared, I get an inequality here. So I replaced y squared by x squared plus y squared. Although if I do this, I'm in a little trouble. So I'm going to lose x squared plus y squared completely on the next step, which is what I want to get to. So that's not good. Hmm. So let's think about reciprocals, or maybe an easier one. When is this true? It's not true all the time. So let's assume z is positive and not 0. So we don't have to worry about infinite, you know, undefined. But, and we know our quantities are all going to be not negative. So I don't need to think about negative values. So what type of z's is this true? Is a reciprocal greater than the regular value? Zero to 1. So it works as long as z is between 0 and 1. So inside the unit circle, basically. So inside the circle, unit circle, your reciprocal is actually bigger than your original number. All right, so for inside the unit circle, I get this inequality right here. So I'm going to replace. So it is true that this inequality would work, but it's not going to lead me where I want to go. So it's an estimate, but it's not going to lead me down the path I want to. Or it's, it's going to cancel out exactly what I want. So I'm going to now replace, and I better erase. So when you're dealing with inequalities, writing uh, vertically is a little bit confusing. On the next line, I could write, I could write this. So if the first thing, if this line, this quantity right here is less than epsilon, I put something smaller in there. So it's even less. So it is certainly still smaller than epsilon. So that's a little bit strange to see. I like to line it up horizontally. I like to line it up like that. So then it's like, oh, epsilon is the biggest. The original thing was smaller. And then I substituted it out for something even smaller. But either way, this thing on the far left is still less than epsilon. It's less than something that's less than epsilon. So I need an estimate for xy squared. So I assumed, so I didn't use that inequality. So when that's less than 1, and greater, of course greater than 0. But we're dealing with the limit, so it's 
never, we don't have to worry about what happens when it's zero. All right, when, when x squared and y squared are less than one, I can say that individually, x and y individually are also less than one. So I'm going to put an absolute value around x. Why can I say that this product is less than 1? Yep. So it'll be two numbers that are smaller than 1. And of course, you square something smaller than 1, it gets even smaller. And then multiply it by another number less than 1, it's going to get even smaller. So as long as, again, we're inside the unit circle, we have this property. So we can go at another algebraic property of absolute value. You've probably used this lots of times. Absolute value of a product is absolute value individually of the product. So I'm going to use that little algebra rule right here. So I got absolute value x, y x times y squared, Ooh, not plus, that doesn't work with plus. So I just did algebra on that step. And now I'm going to replace the absolute value x, y squared with 1. Wait, uh-oh, that's not good. So if I put a 1, if I replace this by 1, which of these two quantities is bigger? The one with the 1. So my inequality sign goes that way. That's bad. I want it to be going the other direction. So we need to get a little smarter about this. So let's erase this. Maybe we can use the original inequality that I erased. This isn't good either because I'm going, if I made this substitution right here, I'd put in something bigger again. I'd have the same problem I had before. I'm trying to put in estimates that are smaller, not ones that are bigger. If you're super precise, it may only get a tiny bit bigger, and you can say, oh, it's two thirds bigger or something like that. But I don't know exactly how much bigger it would be. And in fact, this one could be quite a bit bigger if y is very close to 0 and x is closer to 1. Then the right side could be quite a bit bigger. Hmm.
So I'm not sure what the next step is. So I'll find that out and then we'll finish this problem tomorrow. But before we go to get this inequality, I did have to make the assumption that we were close to the origin. We were close to 0, 0. So you're going to need to write down. Also, if you look at the very end, what is the max, just from that assumption, what's the maximum delta could be right there? So I also made the assumption delta is no bigger than 1. So I know for sure delta is less than 1. Well, I should say less than or equal to 1. So if delta happens to be epsilon squared, for example, it would be the minimum of epsilon squared and 1, because you can't let delta get bigger than 1. So we just found an upper bound on delta to make that inequality actually work. So if you enjoy doing this stuff, this is basically real analysis where you're doing a whole lot of estimations very carefully. Then they call it advanced calculus. Usually your first course, your first year of it is called real analysis or advanced calculus. So you basically go through everything using epsilons and deltas. It does make your brain hurt, and it makes you think a little bit outside the box, because a lot of times you're doing inequalities, which are basically, that's limits or inequalities, very carefully done.